The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow, from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden who the angel's name Lenore, nameless her for evermore. And the silk and sad uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I still repeating, to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, that is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, I said, or oh, madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came at rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened the wide the door. <laughs> darkness there is nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence wasn't broken, and it still gave no token, and only the word was spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and echo murmured back the word, Lenore, nearly this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard the tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what thereat is and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when the, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of a saintly days of yore. Not the least obedience made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mane of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then the seventy bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven thou, I said, art sure no craven? Ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is in the night's Platonian shore. Thoth the raven nevermore. Much I marvelled this ungainly fowl, to hear the score so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevance bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever, se ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust spoke only, that one word as if the soul in that one word he did outpour, nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he, he leave, as my hopes have flown before, then the bird said, nevermore. Startled I still, startled at the stillness broken by, reply safely spoken, doubtless I say, what is utters, its only stock and store, caught from the, some unhappy master, who unmercifully disaster, followed fast and followed fast, till he songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope, that mel melancholy burden bore, of never, nevermore. But the raven still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust the door, bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking that what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking, nevermore. This I sat in guessing, but no syllable expressing, the fowl, his fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat dividing on my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, that the lamp light gloated, oh. But those velvet violet lining, with the lamp light gloating, oh, she shall pass, oh, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from the unseen censer, swung by seraphim, his footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite, and nepheth from the memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff, this kind of nepheth, for and forgot his lost Lenore. Quote the raven nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if a bird or devil, whether tempest sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, undaunted on his desert land enchanted. enchanted. On this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore. Is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, I said, thing of evil, prophet still, if a bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if, within the distant Aiden, I shall clasp the sainted maiden, who's the angel's name Lenore. Clasp will rear the radiant maiden, whose angel's name Lenore. Quote the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or friend, I shrieked upstarting, get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume, as the token of that lie shall s soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out of my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of the palace just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a deeming that is dreaming, and the lamplight, oh, he's streaming, thro throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Phew.